So Microsoft has been making a lot of changes to their services on Azure. And in particular, they have been doing a lot of changes to the mobile service. And chances are, in fact, that you're coming from one of my courses where I have been using that service a lot. And it turns out that the process that I described, the process that was useful before, is now outdated. It doesn't work anymore. And so in this video, I want to show you exactly what is it that you have to do now with the new process. Granted, it is a bit more complicated, but it is still a great way to add cloud functionality to your applications. And to show you the process that you will have to follow, I have this very simple application. Now, the application in here is not something that I want to focus on too much. This is just a very simple Red Books application with this new books page where users can enter the book name and the book author and the finished date, which is using this functionality here in this book class. Currently, I am already using this Red Books 6 Azure service. We're going to be creating a brand new one in just a minute, which is being used to save data and of course to read data. So this is already a working service. But of course, I'm going to be creating one from the ground up. Now, just to show you that this is working, I have the application running in here. And these books are already coming from the cloud. So this is reading or using the data from this read books method that I have right here. And I can add and I can enter some random data as I have been using, save it, return, and it gets read again. And in fact, let me show you here on Google Chrome and that data. So this is my Redbooks SQL database that is connected to the Redbooks 6 web service that I have over here. And I have the query editor and I have the book class. And if I select the rows from here, notice that I see those items that I have been inserting in here. So as you can see, indeed, these are the exact same items. And the name, I'm not listing the author in this list view, but you can check out the finish date, which is this information that is here on purple. So this is already working, but let's figure out what is it that we have to do now, because the process, as I mentioned, is a bit more elaborate than before. So the first thing that we have to do is still, as I have been describing in some of those lectures that I have in my courses, is to create the SQL database. However, instead of selecting the SQL database service, I am going to be searching for SQL Azure. And this is going to give me a lot of results. One of them, Azure SQL. This is the one that I want to select. So I'm going to be creating a brand new Azure SQL service, selecting SQL database, and just a single database will be enough. And I click on Create. This is going to give us a very similar interface that you may be familiar with already to create a new service. So I'm going to be selecting a subscription, a research group. I will, of course, set the database name. Let's call this Red Books. I believe this is available. It is. And I am going to be, let's create a brand new service. I will call this Red Books 2. So this is available. Yes, it is. And I, of course, have to set the login information, the password. Of course, make sure that you do not forget this information because we're going to be using this in a minute. And select the location. As always, try to select a location that is closest to most of your users and click on OK. Finally, for the computer and storage, we can actually select the most basic one and click on apply. The most basic service is going to be more than enough. Review and create and create. So this is going to create the database itself. We are going to be connecting to this database through another service, a web application service. So that is perhaps something different to what I have explained before, because previously there was a mobile application service that we could select and create the SQL database directly from that service. This time, it is a bit different. I will first have to create the SQL database and then connect a web app service, not a mobile app service. So let's just wait for this resource to be ready. 
so we can create that web app service as well. And here it is, eventually both the server and the database are ready, so we can navigate over to these new resources, the SQL database. And actually, before creating that web app service, there is an additional thing that we have to do. And that is to come here to the query editor and try to log in with our server credentials, of course. It is likely that you won't be able to log in immediately, as you can see in here, because we have to set access to our current IP address. So I'll simply have to click on this small link in here and click on Add Client IP. And that's it. That is going to be adding our current IP address so we can access the database. However, there is an additional very important step that you have to do in here. And that is to allow Azure services to access this server. Otherwise, once we connect our web app, it won't be able to actually write or read from the database. So, with this enabled, we can click on Save. And once the changes have been saved, we can close this blade and try to log in again. And this time, we should be in. And it is in here where we will have to create the tables with actual SQL queries. So, this is quite different to what we could do before. Previously, there was this simple interface, we would just set the name of the table and everything would be created. This time, we have to execute some SQL queries. Now, if you are familiar with that, this is nothing difficult to you, very simple to do. But if you aren't, all we have to do is execute some simple commands in here. For example, if I want a new book table, which is exactly what I need for my application, I will simply in here, in the query editor, write create table and the name of the table, in my case, book. And then inside of parentheses, and I will just close it already in here and add a semicolon, inside of this parentheses, I can set all of the columns for this table. And the columns that I need are the ones that are inside of my book class. So I need the ID as a string, the name, the author, the publisher, the ISBN, and the finished date. The finished date as a daytime. So, following this particular set of properties, I would add one column for each and every one of these properties. So, my table would look something like this. I will start with the ID column, which is going to be an N varchar. So, this is a string. And I can set in parentheses how long this ID is going to be. Let's say that the ID is going to be 36 characters. And very important, the ID has to be the primary key. So I have to establish it right here. That is for the ID. As I mentioned, I am also going to require the name of the book. That is also going to be in Varchar. But this one can be a bit longer, so let's make it 256 characters. And this is not primary key, it just is a column, so it can stay like this. And actually, I will need a few more columns like this one. Apart from the name of the book, also the author, the ISBN, and the publisher. And by the way, you have to make sure that the name of the columns are exactly the name of your properties over here. So name, author, publisher, ISBN. It's okay if they are not capitalized. So my tables in here are not starting with a capital letter. That is just fine. As long as the string is identical. So name, author, publisher, ISBN. Finally, for the finished date, this will have to be a daytime. So finished date is going to be daytime offset. And daytime would be fine as well, but I normally use daytime offset. And that's it. This is everything that I need for my table. Now, as soon as I run this query, the table is going to be created. If it is successful, now you would be able to expand the tables section over here to the left and see the new database. And this is exactly what you would do for any other table that you need. So if you need, for example, 
a user table. You would just change the name and change the properties and that would be it. So excellent. We now have this table. The next step is to create the web app service. So to do that, again, I am going to navigate over to create a resource and I can click on OK. I don't need to save anything from there and select web app. Again, this is no longer going to be a mobile app, although eventually we do enable this as a mobile app, but the template is the web app service. So again, we select the subscription, select the resource group, select the name. Let's call this Red Books. Let's see if it's, if it's available. It apparently isn't. Let's call this Red Books 7. So I'm already here on the seventh Red Books application. Now in here, we're going to be using Coth as the option to publish the service itself. Indeed, we will have to create it. It won't be as difficult as it may sound. Then in runtime stack, we are going to select ASP.NET, the latest version available. I'm sure it will work. In this case, it is version 4.7 and select the region. As always, try to select the same region as for the database, so the latency is the smallest possible. And finally, select a plan. You may have to create your own. So if you create a new plan, simply set the plan name and the size can be the smallest one available. Now, in my case, I no longer have access to free tiers. I have used all of my free tiers. So I'm going to select this D1. The free tier is more than enough. Click on apply and review and create and create. Now let's wait for this new service to be created so we can set up the connection between this web app service and the database that we have just created. And here it is. Eventually it is created so we can navigate over to that resource. The first thing that we have to do in here is navigate over to configuration. In here we have to set up a couple of things. One of them may or may already be something that you have done, something that I already explained in some of my courses, but the other one may be a little bit different. So what we have to do first and foremost is make this web application also a mobile app service. To do that, we have to add a new application string. So right here, click on new application string and set the name to mobile apps management underscore extension in capital letters underscore version in capital letters as well. And the value simply latest and click on OK and save the changes. This is going to be enough for the web app service to suddenly be a mobile app service as well. It's going to be managing mobile apps. The key thing in here, though, is the connection to our SQL database. So down below, we're going to be creating a new connection string. This is how this service is now going to be connecting to that SQL database. So the first thing is to set the name. And the name has to be ms underscore table connection string. The type is going to be SQL Azure. And the value is something that we can create by navigating over to the SQL database. Now to do that, I'm actually going to be opening another tab and navigate to my portal as well. But I'm, I'm going to be navigating back and forth between these two tabs to get the values necessary to create that connection string. So again, I will have to first navigate over to this Redbooks database, the one that I have just created in the Redbooks 2 server. And here I'm going to start to get information. So navigating back here to create the value, this is going to be data source equal TCP colon. And after the colon, I'm going to have to pass this server name that we have in the database. So over here we have in the overview for the SQL database, this server name, we can just copy this and paste it in the other tab after TCP, like this. Then comma, and the next thing that we have to pass in here is a port. 
normally you will have to pass 1433 for the port so that's it and then a semicolon so that is the data source after the data source we have to pass the initial catalog so initial catalog equal and here we have to pass the name of our database so that will be red books so essentially from this server we're going to be using this database then colon and your user id so user id is going to be the one that you have just created when you created the server however I actually prefer you navigate back to this SQL database and over to connection strings and over to any of these tabs that is not ADO.net. In here, you're going to find something very similar, UID. This is a string that you have to pass, the user ID at and the name of the server. So just copy that and paste it after user ID. Finally, colon. And your password so right here after actually this is a semicolon sorry about that after the id semicolon password equal and your password the one for your server and that's it you will be able to click on ok and finally click on save now the connection should be established now your web app service should be able to connect back to the SQL database. Remember, very important, that you would have to have enabled that connection. So very important that you double check here in the SQL database. In the overview, by clicking the set server firewall button, that this option is enabled. This is something that we did just a few minutes ago, but just double check, this is going to be very important. So if this is on, and back in the web application, you have this connection string, the connection should be enabled. But the functionality is still not there. We have to add the functionality. So our web app service actually inserts and reads and updates and deletes everything from that database. Now, the quick way to do so is this. You will have to navigate over to github.com forward slash laloco forward slash redbooks backend. This is a GitHub repository that I have created. This is the code that I am using over on this Redbooks 6 service, the one that I showed you at the beginning of this video. And fork this repository over to your own GitHub account. Create a new one if you don't have any. However, this code right here in the tables folder only contains the files for the book table so if you don't have a book table or you have other tables you would have to replicate the code that is inside of each and every one of these files but name the file differently using the name of your table so for example if you have a user table you would have to create a user.js file with a code exactly as it is inside of this book.js file. No need to change anything. And also create a user.json file with exactly the same code. And do the exact same thing for each and every one of your tables. And that's it. I will show you how to create this code, however, from the ground up in just a minute. But if you don't want to know, if that is not something that you need to know, if having the code is enough for you, you can just fork this over to your GitHub account and navigate back to your web app service. In here, you're going to find in the deployment section a deployment center option. Here, select GitHub and make sure that you log in with that GitHub account. As soon as you select it, click on continue, and in here select app service build service. Click on continue, select that organization from your GitHub account, and that repository that you have just forked. So in my case, it is the red box backend that I have right here, 
Redbox backend. And then select the master branch, which may be the only one that you see, but just select it. Click on continue and click on finish. What this is going to do is every single time that there is new code available on the master branch for this GitHub repository, it is going to build the service with the code that exists in that GitHub repository. This is actually some continuous integration, very powerful thing. The purpose of this lecture is not to talk about continuous integration at all, just that this is going to be using that code from that Redbox backend GitHub repository that you have just connected. So let's just wait a couple of minutes for the build to complete and test everything out. Remember again, very important, that you would have to have changed the files inside of the tables folder. So if you have other tables, you would have to add the corresponding files. In my case, because I have a book table in the database, I have book files in here. But for each and every one of the tables that you have in the database that you created, you would have two different files inside of this folder. The JavaScript and the JSON files. So don't forget that. Eventually, you should see that the status has changed to success and active, hopefully. As soon as this is ready, we are ready to test things out. So, I am going to navigate back to the overview and grab this URL, as always. Navigate back to my application. And by the way, the application continues to work exactly the same as before, using the same NuGet package and the same classes and everything as I normally explain my courses. So all I have to do is change the URL in here using the mobile service client. The client down below is already going to be in setting and reading as always. And just in case you forgot, you have to simply add the microsoft.azure.mobile.client NuGet package to your .NET standard library. That is in the case of Xamarin, of course. But let's go ahead and test this out. So we have the mobile service URL difference. I will first need to rebuild the solution. And as soon as it builds, just run it on any device. Here we see the application up and running. Of course, at first, it's going to try to read an empty database. So it won't read anything, but let's click on add. Let's type some random things in here, click on save. We get navigated back, we see the item. So supposedly this was successfully inserted. Now let's navigate back to the database itself. We are not anymore going to be able to check the database from the web app service. So we will always have to navigate back to the database. So I will navigate to the Redbooks database, the one on the Redbooks 2, the one that I created for this video. Navigate over to Query Editor, login again, expand the tables, click on this ellipsis next to the table that I want to check, and just select top 1000 rows. And as you can see indeed, we see this brand new item. And what this does actually is just run this query, of course. So just to double check again, let me add an actual a book. I don't know, maybe the four hour work week, Tim Ferriss, uh, some random dates in here, September 1st, 2017, something like that. Click and save. We can navigate it back. So it should have been inserted. Navigate back to the database, run this command again. And here it is, the four hour work week, Tim Ferriss from the 1st of September 2017. So this is how you would now connect a mobile app service over to any of your mobile applications. Certainly quite different than before. Now, you can actually just finish the video right now if you don't want to know how to create this code, if you're good just knowing that the code is right here or that you have already forked it, that's fine. Thank you for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. If you want to know how to get this working, stick around for a few more minutes. So the first thing that you would have to make sure of is that you have Git installed. So just make sure that you navigate here to git-scm.com 
and download Git for your computer. Probably it is already installed on your system, but in case it isn't, just come here. And you will also have to install a node. So you will have to come here to node.js.org forward slash en forward slash download and download the long-term support option for your computer. So whatever installer that you need. As soon as you have done that, you're going to have to open your terminal or your git bash that is installed with git on Windows and execute a few commands. So the first thing would have to navigate over to a brand new folder. So for example, in my case, I can navigate over to projects and inside of projects, let me create a red books seven folder and CD into that new red books seven folder. Once I am in here, I am going to be initializing those two things. First, get with get in it which eventually will allow me to send all of this code over to a GitHub repository. And then execute npm init dash dash yes. This is going to create this package.json file inside of your folder. So once that package is created inside of that folder, I'm actually going to open this folder with my Visual Studio Code editor. Feel free to use whatever editor you want, of course. But as you can see, now I have this package.json file inside of the folder. I want to change the license to MIT. Just a tiny change in here. Then, back on the terminal, I'm going to have to execute npm install express and Azure mobile apps. These are the packages that the service has to use. And dash dash save. This is going to do its thing. It's going to install Express and Azure mobile apps. There are the packages that the service is using. So excellent. As you can see back in the editor, now we have these package log JSON and these node modules. These are the ones that are going to be very useful for the service. Now, before committing anything over to Git, what I want to do is navigate over to gitignore.io to create a gitignore file for Node. So simply select Node in here, click on Create, and copy all of this code that is going to be displayed on your browser so that some node files that are easily recreated are not committed. So right here in the root of this new folder, I'm going to be creating a .git ignore file and paste that code. Next, right here again in the root, we're going to be creating a couple of things. First, the app.js file. And here actually what I recommend is you navigate over to that GitHub repository that I shared and copy the code from the app.js file. This is actually code that was created by Microsoft themselves. So this is in one of their quick starts. So just copy all of this code and paste it. Basically, it is going to be using any API folder. So you may remember how easy APIs are also a thing that you could do previously and the tables folder which we're going to be creating in a second. It is also going to be enabling a port to listen for requests and registering the mobile app middleware. And also at the top, you may notice that both Express and Azure mobile apps are being used, which are the ones that we have just installed. And finally, create that tables folder. The one that I mentioned is going to contain a JavaScript and a JSON files for each of the tables that you have. So for example, in my case, I would create a book.js and a book.json. And again, you can come here to the repository and copy the code that exists in my table, in my files. So for example, for the JS, just copy all of this code. That is just some basic code. It's not really doing anything. 
is it is just making sure that the application is correctly reading, inserting, updating, and deleting from the table. And the JSON file, very similarly, is simply setting the access to the table. So in this case, I am setting everything to anonymous. So any user can read, insert, update, delete, and undelete from the table. And that's it. This is everything that you need. Of course, finally, you would have to create a GitHub repository to get everything from this local Git repository over to that GitHub repository. Because as we saw, you would connect that GitHub repository over to the web app service. So the continuous integration process is enabled. But essentially, you would come here over to GitHub, create a new repository. Let's call this Redbook 7. This can be private, no need for it to be public. Create the repository. Grab the URL for this repository. Navigate back to the terminal. Make sure that you are still inside of that directory. And first and foremost, execute git add dot. So all of the files that you have created are being tracked. Then git commit dash m and I don't know, initial commit for the message of this commit. And then git remote add origin. The origin word in here can be something different. It is just a name and the URL that we have just copied. And finally, git push u origin master. You would of course change this word in here if you named the remote differently and just execute. At this point, everything would be sent over to your repository. So if you reload the GitHub repository, you would see this code. And this again is the one that you would connect to the service. So for example, this Redbooks 7 service. Remember that we had to navigate over to deployment center and in here select GitHub and so on, which would again, every single time that new code is pushed or merged or committed to the master branch in this GitHub repository, execute automatically a new build right here in this web app service you would know that everything was successful when you see success active here in the status. Oh, and I was actually forgetting a couple of very important files. I forgot about the server.js and the iisnode.jaml files. This again, you can get from the repository that I shared. So just make sure that you have these two new files inside of the root directory. So iis.jaml and server.js. Something very important though, in the server.js, you have this line of code that is adding a table that currently has the name of my table. In your case, you would have to add the name of your table. So just make sure that you do that. Of course, commit everything to your local repository, push over to GitHub. And again, every single time that new code is available over on the GitHub repository, everything, is going to be continuously implemented on the web app service. So there you go. This is exactly how you create all of this code, just in case you wanted to know. Hopefully this video was very useful. In any case, see you in the next one.